Through Tesla, Elon Musk has already done more good for the environment than most people would ever dream of. But the richest man on Earth isn't stopping there. Elon has a new plan that could very well be Earth's saving grace in the wake of climate change, harnessing CO2 for fuel. SpaceX's ultimate goal is to enable astronauts to build the first sustainable human colony on Mars. To achieve this lofty goal, the company is working to develop a fully reusable Starship launch system capable of ferrying 100 tons of cargo to orbit. Starship is a two-stage launch vehicle consisting of a spacecraft and a super-heavy rocket booster. Both stages are powered by Raptor engines that utilize cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen as a propellant also known as Methalox. Super Heavy will be equipped with at least 32 Raptor engines capable of generating over 16 million pounds of thrust. It is designed to become the world's most powerful operational rocket. Starship will be equipped with three Raptors optimized to navigate in the vacuum of space, and another three designed for atmospheric flight. The unique Raptor engines are designed by SpaceX to enable the first settlers on Mars to synthesize fuel via in situ resource utilization. Astronauts could build a propellant plant on the Red Planet to create Raptor engine fuel through the Saboteur process, which involves extracting carbon dioxide from the planet's atmosphere and digging subsurface ice water to create liquid oxygen and liquid methane to fuel the spacecraft. Elon recently got on Twitter to announce SpaceX's plan to take CO2 out of the atmosphere and turn it into rocket fuel. He invited those that are interested to join him, most likely referring to companies and scientists. In a follow-up tweet, the SpaceX CEO added that it will also be important for Mars, but didn't reveal any more details. This is bigger than most people think, because finding a way to capture CO2 from a planet's atmosphere and environment has the potential to improve global warming on Earth, and on top of that, enables SpaceX to achieve its goal to create a space-faring civilization. If SpaceX successfully develops carbon-capturing technology, Starship could become a carbon-neutral rocket long-term. Developing the technologies to extract CO2 from Earth's atmosphere will be very useful to remedy climate change. That's probably why Elon recently donated $100 million to an XPRIZE competition, which searched for the best proposals for CO2-capturing technology from all over the world. A team of students from Monash University in Australia and Malaysia also received a $250,000 award funded by Elon. Emily Kiao, the chief executive officer of the Monash Carbon Capture and Conversion Team, said, We submitted a biotechnology proposal that consisted of biologically assisted carbon capture and conversion methods, which focused on the capture of CO2 from the ocean and air via artificial forestry and microalgae cultures in novel design photobioreactors. The biomass produced from these carbon farms will then be utilized downstream, powered by bioenergy, in their transformation into cross-laminated timber, for sustainable building and for biochar, a charcoal that can be used for soil amendment. It will be very interesting to see which carbon capturing technology SpaceX engineers develop and end up using in the years to come. Researchers have now come up with a new way to create methane-based rocket fuel that they hope can make return trips from Mars more feasible. This method was previously theorized by Elon Musk and engineers at SpaceX who considered ways to use carbon dioxide and water from ice on Mars to acquire the carbon and hydrogen necessary to create methane. Kuo Lin Shin, a physicist at the University of California, led this research and commented on it, saying, Lots of engineering and research is needed before this can be fully implemented, but the results are very promising. Using a single atom zinc catalyst, this team took the existing two-step saboteur process and made it into a one-step process. In the statement, Shin said, The zinc is fundamentally a great catalyst. It has time, selectivity, and portability, a big plus for space travel. The statement also said that by narrowing the two-step process down to one, the mechanism becomes more compact and portable, and therefore easier to transport for use on Mars. Researchers are also suggesting a biologically inspired alternative that can produce both methane and liquid oxygen from Martian resources. The new technique would involve shipping two microbes to Mars. The first would be cyanobacteria, which would use sunlight to create sugars via photosynthesis. The second would be genetically 
modified E. coli bacteria that would ferment those sugars into a rocket propellant called 2,3-butanediol. Although 2,3-butanediol is a weaker rocket fuel than methane, the gravity on Mars is only one-third of what is felt on Earth. NASA has certainly been busy when it comes to everything carbon-related, and some of the agency's work in 2020 proves that point. You would need a load of propellant to get to Mars, and a lot more if you were planning on getting back to Earth. Launching a rocket off the surface of Mars will require industrial quantities of oxygen, which, along with rocket fuel, makes up propellant. A crew of four would need about 55,000 pounds, or 25 metric tons of it, to produce thrust from 15,000 pounds of rocket fuel. But instead of shipping all that oxygen, what if the crew could make it out of thin Martian air? A first-generation oxygen generator aboard NASA's Perseverance rover will test technology for doing just that. The Mars Oxygen In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment, or MOXIE, is an experimental instrument that stands apart from Perseverance's primary build. One of the rover's main purposes is capturing returnable rock samples that could carry signs of ancient microbial life. While Perseverance has a suite of instruments geared towards helping achieve that goal, MOXIE is focused solely on the engineering required for future human exploration efforts. Researchers have talked about in situ resource utilization since human beings started going to space. Think of it as living off the land and using what's available in the local environment. Kind of like what Bear Grylls does, but in space. According to MIT's Michael Hecht, the instrument's principal investigator, breathing is just a side effect of MOXIE's true goal. Rocket propellant is the heaviest consumable resource that astronauts will need, so being able to produce oxygen at their destination would make the first crewed trip to Mars safer, cheaper, and easier. The atmosphere on Mars poses a major threat to human life, but it is well suited for oxygen production. It's only 1% as thick as Earth's atmosphere, but it is 95% carbon dioxide, which contains oxygen. Moxie pulls in that air with a pump, then uses an electrochemical process to separate one oxygen atom from each molecule of carbon dioxide, leaving carbon monoxide as a byproduct. As the gases flow through the system, they're analyzed to check how much oxygen has been produced, how pure it is, and how efficiently the system is working. All the gases are then vented back into the atmosphere after each experiment is run. This electrochemical conversion requires high temperatures, about 1,000 470 degrees Fahrenheit in order to work. To manage those high temperatures, MOXIE features a variety of heat-tolerant materials. Special 3D-printed nickel alloy parts heat and cool the gases flowing through the toaster-sized instrument, while super-light insulation called aerogel holds in the heat to minimize the power needed to keep it at operating temperatures. The outside of MOXIE is coated in a thin layer of gold, which is an excellent reflector of infrared heat and keeps those crazy high temperatures from radiating onto other parts of Perseverance. According to Assad Abubakar, a MOXIE systems engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab in Southern California, MOXIE is designed to make about 6 to 10 grams of oxygen per hour, just about enough for a small dog to breathe. A full-scale system geared to make propellant for the flight back home would need to scale up oxygen production by about 200 times what MOXIE will create. Michael Hecht estimates that a full-scale MOXIE system on Mars might be a bit larger than a household stove and weigh around 2,200 pounds, almost as much as Perseverance itself. Work is ongoing to develop a prototype for one in the near future. The team expects to run MOXIE about 10 times over the course of one Mars year, which is two Earth years, allowing them to watch how well it works in varying seasons. The results will inform the design of future oxygen generators. Hecht said that MOXIE isn't the complete answer, but it's a critical piece of it. If successful, it will show that future astronauts can rely on this technology to help them get home safely from Mars. It's clear that for Elon to convert CO2 from the air into rocket fuel, he'll have to get pretty crafty. Right now, SpaceX's Starship uses supercooled liquid methane and liquid oxygen to propel itself away from Earth. Earlier space SpaceX rockets, like the Falcon 9, also use liquid oxygen, but combined it with refined kerosene. These fuels will not be there at our convenience on Mars, which is why scientists have developed the brilliant in-situ concepts that would be capable of using the CO2 on Mars. SpaceX has gone a step further with this, and its one-of-a-kind Raptor engines will enable the first settlers on Mars to synthesize fuel
fuel using in situ resource utilization. Astronauts could build a propellant plant on the red planet to create Raptor engine fuel using the saboteur process, which involves extracting carbon dioxide from the planet's atmosphere and digging subsurface ice water to create liquid oxygen and liquid methane to fuel the spacecraft. As Elon's dreams for humanity near reality with every Starship test, it will be very interesting to see how developments in carbon capture technology will factor into not just Starship's future, but the future of space travel in general. Until next time, welcome to the future.